Next up is Newton's second law, or N2L for short. Um, and this is the real workhorse of Newton's laws of motion. So what Newton's second law says is that the total force, which we call the net force, on an object equals its mass times its acceleration. So to write that out, we can do um, F net equals mass times acceleration. Or a way that we commonly write this is we use sigma, the mathematical symbol for summing. Um, so net force as sigma F equals mass times acceleration. Okay, and in this expression, either one, recall that accelerations just come from kinematics. So the acceleration um, is from kinematics. Um, don't forget, it is ma uh, meters per second squared, for instance, for units. Um, and it's just a description of how the object moves. You take a video of the motion, and from that you have all the information you need to figure out its acceleration, even if you don't know anything else that's going on. Um, mass is how much material there is. Um, its units are kilograms in the SI system. Um, so notice that this gives us, uh, um, finally, what the units of a force are, because we know now the units of everything on the right-hand side of these equations. So units of force are going to be units of mass times units of acceleration, so kilograms, meters per second squared. Um, and we call one kilogram meter per second squared a newton, where the symbol for that is a capital N. Um, if you write out the entire word for the force, um, sometimes we do that, like if you write out meter, M-E-T-E-R, um, you can write out newtons, um, and that is lowercase n-e-w-t-o-n. Um, kind of a peculiarity of the SI system is that even when units are named after a person, we still write out the entire unit in lowercase. Um, the symbol is a capital N, but the name, when you write it out, has a lowercase n. Okay, so um, we know how to measure masses. Um, we know how to measure accelerations. You measure masses with just a scale. You measure accelerations by um, getting kinematic data. Um, can we measure forces directly? Um, well, yeah, so one way that we can measure forces um, is with a spring. So essentially, if you push on an object with a spring, the spring will compress. And then by figuring out how much the spring compresses, that gives you a measure of how big the force was. Similarly, if you pull on an object with the spring, the spring will stretch. By measuring how much it stretches, that gives you um, a measure of how large a force it is. And by doing that systematically and using a sum spring as a standard, we can uh, measure any force. Uh, and so that's essentially the idea behind what a scale does. It's just calibrated so that you can get forces based on the, um, the uh, amount of compression that the spring has. Okay, so back to Newton's second law then. We can think of this in a couple different ways. So we can think of net force equals ma as a cause-effect relationship. Okay, so um, if you think about it that way, then we apply a force and the um, end result is that there's an acceleration. So essentially we would want to write that um, as the acceleration is equal to the net force, the result of all those forces, divided by the mass. If an object has more mass, it gets less acceleration. If it has more force, it gets more acceleration. Um, that's not the only way to think about this though. Um, we can also think of this as a definition of mass. Okay, so in that case, if I take um, some object and I apply a force to it, well, I can just take that net force and divide it by the acceleration um, that I observe and use that ratio to find the mass. Okay, so acceleration is very well defined. It's just, you know, kinematic quantity, as I keep pointing out. Um, if we have some standard force that we apply to an object and we see how it accelerates, that tells us the mass. Um, I said earlier that we know how to measure masses, but actually there is a little bit of subtlety there. Um, we assume that if I put an object on a scale, the gravitational force tells me the mass, but that wouldn't strictly have to be true. You know, you could imagine living in a universe where the gravitational force is um, not necessarily dependent on exactly how much matter there is. Um, so we typically take that for granted, but there's no reason why that would have to be true ahead of time. Um, and so notice a couple things about this expression. So one is I put magnitudes around the vectors because you can't divide vectors. Um, in this case, the vectors have to be in the same direction, so there's not really any confusion about what it means to um, divide them. But just to make it really clear, uh, we have to take the absolute values for that um, relationship to make any sense. Um, and we can interpret the mass here as um, how resistant an object is to moving. So if I apply the same force and I get less motion, then I have to assume that the object is more resistant to moving. That's what a larger mass means. So a way to interpret mass is the resistance to moving 
or how inert the object is. Um, and by inert, meaning it doesn't want to change what it's doing. It wants to not be affected by anything. Um, and this is where the word inertia comes from. So um, some textbooks even use the word inertia rather than using the word mass. Um, but in any case, it's just telling us how hard it is to get an object to move or change how it's moving.